Yo what's up guys I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto goes back in time with Kakashi to his genin days. Part 5. If you guys enjoy this what if. And want to see part 6. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 13. Alright, I have half an hour before I need to be there for the end of the second part of the exam, Minato announced. Arachimaru had woken up sometime during the night and Minato wanted to be there for the pre-torture interrogation. So did Abito and Itachi, actually, but Minato was too concerned that Arachimaru might say something about how the massacre wasn't his doing and the last thing any of the Achiha needed was to have the truth become a family secret. As Minato claimed that Abito had too much personal interest in the matter in order to exclude him, Itachi could not be in attendance either. Bakashi, however, decided to tag along. Ostensibly, it was because he could but really he wanted to see if the confrontation in the forest had raised a snake Sanin suspicious or if he had any real idea about what happened the night of the massacre. Ibiki nodded. Understood. Even though Ibiki didn't know the truth, he had been in that line of work far too long to ask any questions, should the subject come up. He opened the door to the containment room holding Orochimaru. Greetings, he said pleasantly. My name is Ibiki and I'll be your interrogator for today. I would advise you to cooperate as this part doesn't have to be painful. Arachimaru simply glared at him. Minato. You're looking well. I wish I could say the same, but you've apparently sold your soul to a snake demon, Minato returned evenly. We'll start with a nice easy question and work our way up from there, Ibiki informed his prisoner. What is your name? What's my name? Arachimaru repeated. If you didn't know that then why in the world did you arrest me? Do you think I'm an imposter? If I were going to disguise myself, why would I choose the appearance of someone liable to get arrested if not outright killed in Kanoha? What is your name? Ibiki asked again. Arachimaru sighed. There really was little point antagonizing them on the basics. Arachimaru. How old are you? Ibiki asked. Arachimaru snorted. Why don't you try and ask Sanadi that question? I'm sure you could provide us with your age just as well as she can, Ibiki countered calmly. How old are you? 51, Arachimaru replied. Why are you a missing nin? Ibiki asked. Because Saratobi sensei was an old fool, Minato is a young fool, and I wouldn't touch a cursed necklace, Orochimaru answered promptly. Mark that down as I didn't become Hokage, the Yandame had a problem with me experimenting on the people of Konoha, and I wouldn't touch a cursed necklace, Kakashi advised. Why did you come back? Ibiki continued. I was feeling nostalgic, Orochimaru claimed. Nostalgic? Ibiki repeated. For what? The scenery. Attacking pubescent boys. The forest of death was always a favorite training ground for me and my snakes, Arachimaru insisted. And when I heard there was an exam going on, I decided to join in. Is that so wrong? You killed three genin and could very well have started an international incident, Minato pointed out. Not to mention the paperwork. It really is a good thing they signed those waivers or I'd still be busy with that. I killed them before they signed the waivers, Arachimaru responded. It never leaves this room, Minato said warningly. Why did you go after Ichiha Sasuke? Ibiki asked. Well since I was in the exam anyway, I decided to go all out. It was simply luck that led me to Sasuke-kun's team, Orochimaru said. Sakura's right, that does make him sound like a pedophile, Kakashi murmured. You are on record as saying you would be back to try and steal one of the remaining Ichiha's bodies. Now you're back and went after one of the Ichiha, Ibiki remarked. Well, the other two would be Jounin, yes. Orochimaru asked rhetorically. So I suppose the smart thing to do would be to go after the youngest and most malleable. Sasuke's only malleable if you're offering him a new person to seek vengeance on, Kakashi added his two cents. And what's this about me being on record saying that? Arachimaru demanded. To the best of my knowledge I've never made any such claim. Well, I did when talking to Sasuke Kun a few days ago but not before that. You did, Ibiki answered. The night of the massacre. Arachimaru's eye twitched. For the love of God, how many times do I have to tell you people that I am innocent? It might be a little more convincing if you weren't so unrepentantly evil, Kakashi confided. Be that as it may, we are not here to talk about the massacre, Minato spoke up. Ibiki, I do not want anything he says on that subject to make it to the records. Yes, Hokage-sama, Ibiki agreed. And why's that? Arachimaru sneered. Want to protect your precious student and your son's teammate from the knowledge that Itachi killed them. You wish to deny the involvement you so proudly proclaimed just four years ago in order to pin the blame on one of the few survivors. Minato asked, his tone impassive. No, I do not want such a thing to reach their ears because it would only be claimed by someone with a malicious intent like you. Ibiki, let me know if he says anything else. Where's Kakashi? Sakura asked. 
Later, Sasuke replied shortly. Is that really so surprising? It shouldn't be, Sakura said, but he's actually been on time to all of the official things, and I think I might actually be getting used to it. Not by choice he hasn't, Naruto grinned. That's what he gets for having people in his life, though. Besides us and Guy, of course. We had our own issues, and Guy was too easily sidetracked by rock-paper-scissors competitions Kakashi didn't even need to look up for. You know, Sakura said slowly. It just occurred to me how lucky we are that Kakashi didn't get Shikamaru as a genin. The three took a moment to silently contemplate the horrors of having quite possibly the laziest person ever, particularly before Asuma's death and Kakashi of all people paired together. So you were asking about Kakashi? Naruto said finally. He and my dad are witnessing the beginning of the Bikis interrogation. They always ask a few questions before they do anything to see how cooperative the victim's going to be. My dad's there because it's a threat to village security, and Kakashi went to make sure that snake pedophile doesn't know anything. Aside from the fact that we claimed that Jiraiya or, more specifically, Naruto's godfather, who we all know as Jiraiya was dead, I don't think we gave anything away, Sakura said slowly. The fact that Sasuke has a Manjikyu Sharingan isn't common knowledge, but it's not exactly a secret, either. You know, Sasuke felt the need to point out, if you had just let me kill him like I wanted to, we wouldn't have to worry about this. Sasuke, if we let you kill everyone you wanted to, you would be classified as a natural disaster, Naruto said flatly. I'm not that bad. Sasuke argued. Sakura? Naruto asked. Outvoted, Sakura informed Sasuke. I hate you both, Sasuke informed them seriously. So we've heard, Naruto said airily. Besides, you've seen how shocked everyone is that you just managed to put Orochimaru in a position to be captured, Sakura reminded him. Imagine how they'd react if you managed to kill him. We simply do not need that kind of scrutiny. No one would have to know it was me, Sasuke said. I'm pretty sure the Yamanakas have some kind that works posthumously, Sakura countered. Well, if I destroyed the brain then that wouldn't be a problem, Sasuke insisted. Yeah, but then everyone would start freaking out because there was an S-class missing nin gate crashing and some other mysterious and possibly nefarious vigilante on the prowl, Naruto replied. And then they could very well cancel the exam. Or at the very least make us drop out. And do you remember what Kakashi said about if we don't pass this exam? Sasuke couldn't suppress a shiver. Yes. I agreed to let him live for now, didn't I? I never thought I'd see the day when something was more important to Sasuke than revenge, Sakura said, shaking her head in awe. Even if that something is avoiding Guy's training. I think he's making progress. I don't know, Naruto said, he already killed the unholy alliance in this timeline and everyone else who he wanted revenge on in the previous one. The fact he's already gotten vengeance could explain why he's more patient about getting it again. Sasuke decided to ignore them as a bedraggled Eno chose that moment to jump on his back. Sasuke-kun. I'm so glad you passed. Eno beamed at him. Not that I had any doubt, of course. I'm so glad to be out of that forest after five days. I honestly can't believe I survived five days with Shikamaru and Choji. Honestly, those two would be lost without me. You know, if you haven't bathed in five days, kindly get off of me, Sasuke told her, removing her arms from their stranglehold around his neck. Huh? You mean you have? Ino blinked, surprised. But how? It comes from being incredibly awesome and finishing the exam in six hours, that's how Kiba declared, walking up to them leisurely. Or by being Sasuke. Hey, your brother doesn't talk much, does he? You don't think much, do you? Sasuke countered. Sakura, I am so very happy to see that you have made it past the second round, Lee said cheerfully, clasping her hand. Now we are one step closer to the path of Chunin and true love. I said I'd think about it, Sakura corrected, and only after we're friends first. How youthful. Lee exclaimed. And Sasuke. I will fight you in the finals. Aying Niji, Sasuke responded monotonously, if it is fated. Lee and Tenten both immediately shot looks at their teammate, but he paid the comment no mind. Hey Gara, Tamari. Over here, Naruto called. The Sand siblings made their way over to where the Rookie Nine and Guy's team were waiting. These guys are great, Naruto vouched for the team from Suna. Even the evil soulless puppet wielder? Choji asked. Well. He's decent, Naruto admitted. Hello Naruto, Kankuro said pleasantly. I see you forget to greet me. Not to worry, I know that these things happen sometimes. Sakura? Naruto asked dangerously. Yes. She asked innocently. Why is Kankuro smirking knowingly at me? Naruto inquired. Is he? I didn't notice, Sakura lied. I know there's no way he would have figured it out so soon, Sasuke doesn't actually care enough to fill him in, and I don't think he's even met Kakashi. Did you tell him? Naruto demanded. Sakura winced. Maybe. Sakura. Naruto yelled. What? I was only trying to help. Sakura insisted. You know, so we can speed up the healing. I hate seeing them like this. Naruto huffed. Oh, whatever. 
God, you're not going to apologize to Caputo for that fire incident next, are you? Oh, God no. Sakura said, sounding shocked. I have limits, you know. So you're the new guys, huh? Tenten asked. New guys? Tamari repeated. We're not new, just from Suna. Naruto seems to make it a point to collect friends, Tenten explained. People may try to resist notably Niji, but in the end, it's inevitable. You'll either become his friend or die trying not to be. That's kind of morbid, Tamari noted. Only if you're one of the stubborn ones, Tenten replied, holding out her hand. I'm Tenten, by the way. Tamari, Tamari introduced herself, taking the offered hand. Please don't take this the wrong way, but I think you may be the sanest person I've met here. I get that a lot, Tenten confessed. Hello everyone. My name is Ichiha Abito, and I am the proctor for the third exam. As the time limit is officially passed so the 21 of you that are here have technically passed the second exam, Abito announced. What do you mean technically? Shino asked. Ten and a half matches would go on for far too long, so we're going to have preliminary matches, Abito explained. What? That's not fair. Kiba protested. Yeah, we made it through the second stage. We should get to go to the third stage, Ino agreed. The second exam is not over until we say it's over, Abito said sternly. And if you guys are seriously going to complain this much every time you hear something you don't like, you're not ready to be chewing in. Wisely, everyone else decided to withhold their objections. Great, now since we have an odd number of people, that would mean that either one person would have to fight themselves, Abito informed them. And while this isn't always easy for most people nor for the judges trying to determine if the person won or lost, I've seen it done. Couldn't the odd man out just get a buy? Kabuto asked sensibly. There are no free rides. Abito declared. You want a promotion, you have to earn it. That said, would anybody like to choose this time to quit? Preferably one, three, or even five of you. There's always the possibility the person fighting themselves may win, and we'd be stuck with an odd number for the third exam. Well that can also be done, it doesn't reflect well on your mental health, and we do have some minimum sanity requirements that must be met for promotion. I can see why that might cause problems, Kabuto nodded sagely. Well, I'm out then. Hey Kabuto, you know how this is, like, your seventh time taking the exam? Naruto asked. Better than you, yes, Kabuto replied. I have a theory as to why that is. You give up at the very first opportunity. Naruto cried. I do not. Kabuto defended himself. The first opportunity was before the tenth question. You tried to give up when Anko showed up, though, Sasuke noted. Can you blame me? Kabuto demanded. Hey, you're not even the one she molested. Kiba called out. You're still not over that. Sakura asked. It was traumatic. Kiba claimed. And troublesomely, Shikamaru contributed. I'm starting to think we could just replace you with a button that says troublesome when you press it, Tamari told him. If it wouldn't be so troublesome to look into that, I probably would, Shikamaru replied. Giving up at the second opportunity is different from the first, Kabuto maintained. Whatever helps you train for your eighth exam, Naruto said simply. So does this mean that we can just have ten normal matches without trying to unbalance any of us any further? Choji asked. Kabuto nodded. But first, a few words from our Hokage. Where is he? Kankuro asked. Right here, Minato said, strolling into the room, Kakashi at his heels. You're late, sensei. Sakura said automatically. Sorry, I was on my way here when I decided to try stalking Ibiki. It was. An experience, Kakashi said, looking distant. I wish I could tell if he was lying, Sakura said. We're probably better off not knowing, Sasuke assured her. I see that quite a few of you have made it through the forest of death, and let me congratulate you for that. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, Minato began. Naruto snorted quietly. Time constraints. Please. They waited three hours for Sasuke. We have no choice but to have a preliminary round right now. Normally, you all would be on equal footing as you would be fresh from five days of survival training, but this time nearly half of the remaining applicants finished inordinately early, but being well rested is just their reward for doing so well on the exam. This year has some of the most talented genin that I've seen in the exams for quite some time, so I'm sure that with a little extra training, you all can pass an exam in the near future, even if that exam is not necessarily this one. Abito, would you like to announce the matchups? Certainly, Hokage-sama, Abito said respectfully as he went over to the computer. The computer will randomly match you all up. We're going to run through all of you before we start the matches, so if you're scheduled to go first, don't worry. You still have a few minutes to prepare yourself. Tamari vs. Ino, Sakura vs. Hanada, Toji vs. Shino, Tenkuro vs. Niji, Ara vs. Aku, Naruto vs. Yoroi, Shikamaru vs. Misumi, Tenten vs. Sasuke, Hin vs. Kiba, Lee vs. Dosu, Nuruo. Lee cried, falling to his knees. What is it now? Niji demanded. I'm. I'm last. Lee said, sounding heartbroken. 
Well, you have to learn patience sooner or later, Niji sounded like he was trying to convince himself. Um. Gara. Kenkuro asked tentatively. Are you alright? Oh yes, Gara replied. Zaku's not on the list. List? Sasuke asked blankly. You don't want to know, Sakura told him. Are you sure this doesn't bother you? Kenkuro asked, raising his eyebrows. Baby steps, Naruto said firmly. Chapter 14. Would Tamari and Ino please stay here while everyone else gets out of the way of the battle? Abito requested. Ino is so going down it's not even funny just how badly she is going to lose, Naruto commented as Team 7 went off to a semi-isolated spot so they could converse freely about the matches. You don't know that, Sakura argued. After all, I'm the only person on record to have defeated her mind switch, and I don't think Tamari has a borderline split personality like I did. Yeah, but last time Ino tied with you, and you didn't really know anything you weren't taught in the academy, while Tamari beat Tenten, who was no pushover herself, and was trained by Guy of all people, Sasuke pointed out. Hey. Sakura protested. I wasn't that bad. Yeah, you kind of were, Naruto told her. But don't worry, I was the same way and we both don't suck now. Tamari was probably the worst opponent save Gara for Tenten, given she uses projectile weapons, and Tamari has her fan, Sakura informed them. Although if Ino can't find a way to immobilize Tamari the mind switch will never work. Naruto laughed. Gara is probably the worst opponent for anyone. Poor Zaku. Whatever happened to him originally. He didn't face Gara because Lee did so I don't think anyone actually died during prelims. Didn't Orochimaru sacrifice him and that sound girl to bring back the first and second Hokages to harass the third with? Sakura asked. Sasuke shrugged. I think so. A lot of Orochimaru's involved human sacrifices. Meanwhile, Ino and Tamari were staring each other down. I have to win to show Sasuke-kun what I'm made of, Ino declared boldly. Tamari rolled her eyes. A fangirl fighting for her idol, I see. With that attitude, there's simply no way I could ever allow you to beat me, even if you did have the skills. And why not? Ino challenged. Because that kind of thinking is embarrassing, Tamari replied frankly. And more than that, it's disgraceful. If I manage to snap you out of it when I kick your ass, I'll be doing you a favor. Not appreciating being called a disgrace, Ino charged at Tamari. Soon the Kanoichi just lifted her fan and sent a strong gust of wind to push Ino back. Surprised, Ino tried it again with similar results. The kunai she threw was sent hurtling back towards her and she had to duck in order to avoid getting hit. I can't get near her with that damn fan and I don't know how to get that from her, Ino said, trying to think of a plan. Her eyes lit up when one finally occurred to her. You know, you might be right, she admitted slowly. Maybe I haven't necessarily been the best example of a Kinoichi. Tamari snorted. You think. If you're this bad with your hormones now, I really don't want to see what you'll be like when you're older. Yes, you are a few years older than me, aren't you? Ino said thoughtfully. I suppose that explains your more mature approach. I only graduated four months ago. I haven't even killed anyone yet and I do still tend to obsess over cute boys. Ino's eyes hardened. But that's all going to change. Sakura was just like me and even though she got put on a team with the two hottest guys in our class, she's really grown up and doesn't seem worried about getting a boyfriend at all anymore. I can't lose to her and I will not prove you right about me. With that, she took out a kunai and sliced her hair off at the ponytail. I am more than just a shallow little girl only concerned about her looks and popularity. With that, she tossed the hair she'd removed up in the air and watched it settle around the two of them. Damari stared incredulously at her. Did you? Did you just get a dramatic haircut? I approve of the sentiment to start acting like a real Kinoichi, but now is really not the time to have life-changing moments. We're in the middle of a fight here. Sort out your personal issues later. With that, she waved her fan and swept all of the discarded hair to the side of the arena. Ino's face fell. No. Her plan to immobilize Tamari by imbuing her hair with her chakra and then possessing her had just been literally swept away. Without further ado, Tamari waved her fan again and trapped Ino in a cyclone. She let her spin around a little before letting her crash to the floor, hard. There was a crunching sound as she landed and Ino winced, ah, my leg. Abito went over to check on the falling girl. It looks like it's broken, he told her. Do you want to keep fighting or forfeit? I forfeit, Ino said quietly. Sorry little, girl, maybe next time, Tamari said coolly as she went to join her brothers up on one of the balconies. Harsh, Sakura commented, looking concerned for Ino. And rather embarrassing, too. What did you expect? Naruto asked. She made Tenten look incompetent, and Ino's currently just the kind of Kinoichi Tamari can't stand. Do you think she meant it about taking things more seriously? Probably, given how well that went, Sakura decided. And since she threw me in there as an example of someone who has rapidly improved while well, she's largely the same girl that she was at the academy, if nothing else our rivalry should be enough to spur her on. Is it really fair to have a rivalry with a 12-year-old girl? 
Sasuke asked innocently. Look, it's not my fault my rival didn't come back in time with me, Sakura huffed. And what about Kakashi? He's still maintaining his rivalry with Guy. Yeah, but he really didn't get a choice in the matter, Naruto pointed out. Besides, he's Guy, he continued as if that explained everything. And it did, really. Age doesn't matter when one is so youthful. Seriously, don't say that word, Sasuke ordered. And what was up with that settle your personal issues after the fight? Fights are the perfect time to settle your issues. Naruto declared. That only happens to you and anyone who spends far too much time with you, Sakura explained. Next up is Sakura and Hinata, Abito announced after Ino had been taken to a medic nin to fix her leg. Given Sanadi had been running the hospital personally for the last four years, it wouldn't take long. Would both of you come down here? Hey Sakura. Naruto said as Sakura made a move to head down to the arena. You know you're one of my best friends, right? Right. Sakura said, not sure where this was going. Well Hinata is very important to me as well. I know that you're probably going to beat her, but if you make it anywhere near as humiliating as Niji did, I will not forgive you, Naruto said sternly. I won't, Sakura promised. I like Hinata. Good, Naruto smiled. And for the record, I'm rooting for Hinata. What? How come? Sakura demanded. Because she could use the confidence boost, Naruto replied easily. Besides, Sasuke can root for you. They both turned to look at Sasuke who returned their stares impassively. He'll be rooting on the inside, Naruto claimed. Sakura just sighed and went down for her match. Yo, Kakashi said from behind them. How did it go? Sasuke asked immediately. What? No hi Kakashi, good to see you, Kakashi, if it weren't for you, I'd still be brooding because everyone was still pissed at me for abandoning them to run off with a pedophile, and then after killing him ran off with another one, Kakashi. Kakashi asked, feigning hurt. Sasuke rolled his eyes. Just tell us if Orochimaru knew anything. He was pretty flippant in his answers, Kakashi confided. It was clear that he wasn't taking his status as prisoner seriously and was more annoyed about his capture and whatever delay it made in his plans than anything else. He did make sure to say he felt that your brother was responsible for the massacre, but that was probably more due to the fact that Itachi was there, and even though everyone thinks otherwise Orochimaru was not that night. So it's a good thing Itachi and Ibito weren't allowed to be there, Naruto said. How did Ibiki take that theory? As far as Ibiki is concerned, when Minato said that nothing about the massacre was to be included in the report, Orochimaru said nothing about the massacre, Kakashi explained. He's a professional like that. Pick her ass, Hinata. Naruto called down encouragingly. Hinata blushed a little and smiled back at him. Okay, don't end it too quickly, but don't let her land a hit on me. Sakura murmured. Thanks Naruto. Begin, Abito said. Since one of Sakura's areas of expertise aside from medical and her natural talent that she never really used beyond dispelling was to jutsu and gentle fist was the Hyuga clan's signature style, the battle naturally began with a tojutsu spar. If either one of them lands a good hit, it's over, Kakashi noted. But Sakura should have been able to get one through by now. Why is she holding back? Naruto didn't want Hinata to get crushed, Sasuke explained. She's a really nice girl and it's not her fault that Sakura has years more experience. Naruto defended. All I know is that if Sakura loses because of that she's going to kill you, and if we have to deal with Guy every morning then I will, Sasuke warned him. She'll be fine. Naruto insisted. Sure enough, after nearly 10 minutes of non-stop attacking, both girls were quickly tiring, and Sakura aimed a high kick at Hinata's head. When she brought her hands up to defend herself, Sakura channeled chakra into her fist and punched Hinata's chest. The Hyuga girl flew backwards and into the wall. After waiting for a minute to see if she would get up, Abito went over to check on her. She's out, he confirmed. Congratulations, Sakura. Lee called down to her. Thanks, she replied, waving to him. For the record, Sakura said once she had made her way back to where the rest of the team was standing, I hate you, Naruto. Why? You did fine, Naruto assured her. I know, but that was far harder than it should have been. Hinata may still have insecurity issues, but she's not a pushover, and I don't know if you've ever noticed how Hinata fights after you've just cheered her on, but it is not fun to be her opponent. Well, at least you weren't up against Niji, Naruto said, trying to be positive. Sakura agreed. But I should warn you now that you have just jinxed it and I have to go up against him in the finals, I'm going to kill you. What? How could that possibly be my fault? Naruto demanded. Because you would have jinxed it. Weren't you listening? Sakura demanded. Next up, Shino and Choji, Abito announced. Do I have to fight? Choji whined. You don't want to? Shino asked, possibly surprised. His glasses and coat obstructed his facial expression, and his voice sounded impassive, but the mere fact he would ask indicated he did not expect this. No, Choji replied. I'm only here for the same reason Shikamaru is. And that is. Shino pressed. Because Ino is very troublesome when she doesn't get her way, Shikamaru supplied helpfully. I see, Shino said. 
You can't forfeit, Choji, you already had a chance to, Asuma pointed out. Besides, do you really want poor Shino to have to fight himself? No, but Choji began. Besides, if you fight I'll take you out for barbecue, and if you win I'll pay, Asuma promised. Il, Choji said quickly. Let's go. Baika no Jutsu. Immediately, he swelled up. Nikidin Sensha. With that, he rolled himself into a ball and came at Shino. This is troublesome, Shino noted as he dodged Choji. Why does everybody always steal my catch for us? Shikamaru wondered. Because it's awesome, Kiba replied easily. Just dodging is very much a letdown, but until he leaves that form I can't block his chakra, Shino noted. He summoned two bug clones of himself and watched as Choji rolled over them a few times before finally getting the picture that they would always reform. Reluctantly, Choji uncurled himself so he could determine which of the three Shinos was the real one. When that happened, Shino took the opportunity to send a swarm of bugs Choji's way. What's this? Choji cried. What are the bugs doing? Shino said nothing, waiting. A beat passed and Choji started swaying lightly. Within a minute or so, the boy had passed out. You know, Naruto said idly. Even though I think I could beat him, Shino still creeps me the hell out. Shino creeps everyone out, Sasuke pointed out. Except possibly Gara. At least no one was seriously hurt in that match. Who's up next? Sakura wondered. The next match will be between Niji and Kankuro, Abito unwittingly answered her. As the two made their way to the arena, Sakura turned to Kakashi. Oh yeah, I can't believe I forgot to ask. What happened with Orochimaru? We already covered this, Sakura, Kakashi responded. Seriously, you should pay more attention. I was paying attention and you didn't mention him at all. Sakura protested. And if you were talking about it while I was fighting, then the only way I could have possibly heard you was if you were talking loudly enough for everyone to hear, and we can all agree that's a bad plan. Especially as I'm not even sure I'm supposed to mention anything about this to any of you, Kakashi added. I don't feel like going into it again though, so the gist of it is he's still claiming Itachi killed everyone because he doesn't know who else was there that night since he wasn't but doesn't actually know anything. Sakura nodded. Okay, thanks. Ankuro is so going down, Naruto said eagerly. I agree, Sasuke said. And it will probably be very amusing. You guys are horrible, Sakura reprimanded. Come on, Sakura-chan, he's a puppet user, Naruto reminded her. I thought you were over that, Sakura said. Naruto shuddered. After what happened with Sasori. I will never be over it. You are so melodramatic, Sasuke informed him. Naruto snorted. You're hardly one to talk. I didn't say I was, Sasuke countered. I'm just making sure you realize that about yourself. It wouldn't be to lack self-awareness, after all. I'll keep that in mind, Naruto said matter-of-factly. You cannot hope to beat me, Niji said bluntly. You should surrender right now. You don't know that, Kankuro shot back. You've never even seen me fight. I know you use puppets, Niji replied. And no puppet will ever take down a true Hyuga. Is that a fact? Kankuro asked. It's more than a fact, it's fate, Niji responded. I thought Niji was done with that whole fate thing since Kakashi saved his father, Sakura said curiously. He's still a branch house member raised by a father who hates the main house because a quirk of fate made him the younger twin and, as such, a branch house member, Kakashi explained. Although from what I can tell he's less vehement about it. That's good, Sakura said. He was kind of psychotic about it before. So should you end up facing him you'll kill me less? Naruto asked hopefully. Sakura pretended to consider the question. No. Sakura-chan. Niji quickly activated his Byakugan when despite the fact that Kankuro carried a puppet with him, he showed no indication of using it. I see, Niji murmured, slowly circling around his opponent. When he was passing by Kankuro's wrapped up puppet, he suddenly struck it with a powerful blow. Why did he attack the puppet? Sasuke asked. Is he trying to make sure Kankuro can't use it or something? No, that is Kankuro, don't you remember? Naruto asked. Sasuke just gave him a blank look. Right, you were unconscious during most of the prelims before, weren't you? Naruto asked rhetorically. Well I don't remember much about Kankuro's fight, but I remember that his opponent thought he killed Kankuro when his neck broke and then it started talking and. Creepiest thing in the exams aside from Shino. But Shino's awesome and Kankuro uses evil soulless puppets. When Niji's attack broke through the wrapping, he immediately landed another blow on what was inside it, and Kankuro or his puppet Karasu rather immediately collapsed to the ground since its manipulator was unconscious. That was probably the lamest match I've ever seen but. The winner is Niji, Abito said, shaking his head. That was most youthful, Niji, Guy chastised. But don't worry, Lee was quick to assure him. You can still be my eternal rival. Chapter 15. Kankuro, are you sure we're related? Tamari demanded that Kankuro regain consciousness. That was even more embarrassing than what I did to that fangirl. You called her a disgrace and broke her leg. Kankuro objected. But the fight lasted longer than half a minute, Tamari pointed out. 
She has a point, Gara spoke up. And Kuro turned to him. B but your fights rarely last longer than half a minute. He pointed out a little uncertainty. And if any of those people survived, I'm sure they would be quite embarrassed, Gara replied before heading down to the arena for his match. I just disagreed with Gara, and not only am I still alive, but I didn't even receive a death threat, Kenkuro said, sounding a bit dazed. And you're not even on the list, Tamari marveled. So what does Zaku do? Naruto wondered. I have no idea, Sakura replied. I don't think he made it past the preliminary matches. Sasuke. The resident expert on all things Atagakur shrugged. I don't remember him. I think Rachimaru had managed to sacrifice everyone he had entered in the exam before he left. Makes a habit of that, doesn't he? Kakashi asked rhetorically. It makes you wonder how he ever has any followers at all. Recruitment was actually never really a problem of his, from what I could tell, Sasuke said. He was a veritable Pied Piper, come to think of it. Sakura cocked her head contemplatively. Wasn't the actual Pied Piper some sort of pedophile? That is one theory, Kakashi agreed seriously. Arachimaru really would be one then, Naruto decided. Sasuke sent them all a withering glare. Oh shut up. Seriously, Sasuke, these lack of denials are starting to scare me, Sakura said, sounding concerned. Whatever Sasuke was going to say next was cut off by the gasps from the people who were actually paying attention to Gara's match. Turning their attention to the match, they noticed Gara glaring at a smirking Zaku with sand littering the arena. I kind of get the feeling we missed something. Naruto noted. Hey, Kiba, what happened? Weren't you paying attention? Kiba called back. Not even slightly, Naruto answered honestly. Why is Zaku not only not dead, but not even a quivering mess? Ara sent his sand at Zaku, and Zaku apparently used air pressure to knock it away from him, Kiba replied. Well that was. Unexpected, Sakura said. Do you think Zaku has any chance of winning? Sasuke snorted. No. At most, Gara will have to put some actual effort into this. Not much, but some. Does Gara actually do anything but use sand and transform before Naruto used his therapy jutsu on him? Kakashi wondered aloud. Because he would have to take Zaku by surprise for the sand to work, and not only would people be calling for Gara's disqualification if he released Shukaku, but if the invasion still on then Gara as secret weapon would be far less secret. He wasn't very effective anyway as he lost control and immediately took off for the forest, Sakura pointed out. If Naruto wasn't there and too stubborn to die, he would have just killed us and made his way back towards Konoha, Sasuke disagreed. And even if he wouldn't have been able to tell friend from foe, he didn't seem too concerned with that back then, and so that was a risk they were probably willing to take. I don't think Gara cares about disqualification, Naruto said, but even if the Konoha 11 and Sasuke know about his Jinchuriki status, not everyone knows so he'll probably try not to. Of course, if God forbid Zaku actually does manage to land a hit. Well, there goes that plan. Down in the arena, Gara had completely used up his gourd making three sand clones, so Zaku was surrounded on all sides. You're all out of sand, Zaku gloated foolishly. And even if you do have a couple of clones, I haven't seen you do anything that doesn't involve sand yet. Besides, I can stop you, he declared, waving his arms in emphasis. We shall see, Gar replied shortly. He blinked and the three sand clones quickly dispersed, and the sand making them up headed straight for Zaku. Zaku held up his hands to face his left and right and shot off enough air pressure to beat back most of the sand. Unfortunately he only had two hands and could not move quickly enough to stop the third wave of sand from completely enveloping him. I, Gar ordered before the sand crushed him. Well that was certainly messier than any of our other fights, Abito noted. Anyone who has yet to fight should be warned to steer clear of the blood. It isn't very hygienic and is very slippery. Next up is Naruto vs Yoroi. Hey Gara, great job, Naruto said as he passed Gara on his way down to the floor for his match. Zaku's air pressure thing was completely unexpected, but you didn't let that slow you down. Of course, Gara nodded. Good luck in your match. I don't need luck. Naruto insisted boldly. I have the threat of an entire year full of springtime of youth hanging over my head. And that is. Bad. Gara questioned. Naruto shudders. You. I have no idea. Once Naruto had made his way to his opponent, Yoroi said, this almost isn't even worth my time. You know, Naruto said thoughtfully. It's been quite a while since anyone said that to me. I don't actually remember when the last time was, although I think it was probably Sasuke who said it. I used to hear it all the time, though. It really brings back memories. Not good memories. You may be the Hokage's son, Yorwe acknowledged. But your lineage alone won't help you defeat me. You know, you're so sure that I can't beat you, and I don't even know what it is that you do, Naruto confessed. You don't? Yorwe looked slightly annoyed. I can absorb chakra. Just by touching you, I can suck out your physical and spiritual energy. Do you really think you can beat me without letting me touch you? To his surprise, Naruto burst out laughing. That. Is your special ability. Really. 
Now Yoroi was really annoyed. Yes, really. Why? Oh, nothing, I just. Wow, I have a great matchup. If this were the finals I might be more concerned, but since I just need to beat you and don't have to worry about showing off, I might as well see if I can beat Kankuro for the title of lamest match ever, Naruto replied. Hey. Kankuro protested. The minute he drops the puppet thing he finds something else to start on me about. It's your own fault for not taking the match seriously, Tamari chided. It was just the preliminaries, Kankuro told her. And now you're not in the finals, Tamari responded. I had expected more from you, Naruto, but if you just want to stand there and let me absorb your chakra until you pass out, then I'm certainly not going to stop you, Yorui declared, rolling up his sleeves. You can try, Naruto said, holding his arm out. Yorui grabbed Naruto's arm and started absorbing his chakra. After five minutes or so had passed, Sasuke called down. You're not seriously just planning on letting him absorb your chakra until he passes out, are you? He is going to be the one passing out, not me, Yorui corrected, but everyone ignored him. I kind of have to, Naruto informed him. It's the only way to make this match lamer than Kankuro's. Why are you trying to do that again? Sakura asked. Because he's an idiot, Sasuke said automatically. Because I can, Naruto said with a shrug. So basically what Sasuke said then, Kakashi concluded. You guys are the worst team ever. Naruto complained. We already established that a while ago, Kakashi pointed out. But surely we've gotten better. A little, Naruto grudgingly admitted. But that's really not saying much, all things considered. But the cough, Yorui suddenly collapsed. So Yorui passed out from what appears to be chakra overload, Abido announced. So it looks like the winner is. Hokage-sama, do I really have to let him pass? He literally did nothing but stand there for 10 minutes. He's still standing while his opponent is unconscious, Minato pointed out. No one said the preliminary matches had to be epic. In fact, getting matches like these out of the way is the whole reason we have preliminaries. Hein, Abido sighed. The winner is Naruto. Did I at least manage to have a lamer match than Kankuro did? Naruto asked hopefully. Abito shook his head. Sadly, no. Why not? Poor Naruto sounded so disappointed. Because your match lasted 2000 times longer than Kankuro's, Abito replied. The next match is Shikamaru vs Misumi. This is so troublesome, Shikamaru complained. Can't I just forfeit? Toji already asked me that question, Asuma pointed out. And if I didn't let him quit then I can't let you quit. It wouldn't show such blatant favoritism, now would it? I think he's still unconscious, Shikamaru replied. Come on, he'll never know. You know, you could forfeit anyway, Kankuro pointed out. Shikamaru yawned. Nah, too troublesome. How did someone as lazy as you make it as far as the preliminaries? Tamari fumed. I bet next you're going to say that walking down the stairs to the match is too troublesome. Not that you mention it, Shikamaru began. This is for your own good, Tamari interrupted as she shoved him off the balcony. Why is it that every time you say you're going to do something for someone's own good, it seems to lead to bodily harm to a member of my team? Asuma inquired. Damari shrugged. I'm from Suna, that's how we roll. So since we all know that Shikamaru is going to somehow manage to stall until he tricks Misumi into getting caught in his shadow, do you guys want to go get lunch? Naruto asked. Are we even allowed to leave? Sakura wondered. Akashi shrugged. If Naruto leaves three clones and changes two of them to look like you and Sasuke, you are. That's not being allowed to leave, that's tricking them into thinking we're still here. Sakura objected. Same thing, really, Kakashi said dismissively. It's all very well and good for you too, but my match is next, Sasuke told them. You could always stay here and talk to someone else, Naruto suggested. Sasuke thought about it for maybe half a second. Let's just hurry, shall we? We should probably head back soon, Naruto said after downing his 16th bowl of ramen. Why is that? Kakashi asked. My Sasuke clone just excused himself to go to the bathroom before his match, Naruto explained. Shikamaru won, by the way. So if Sasuke doesn't get back soon people are going to get the wrong idea, Kakashi concluded. The door suddenly slammed and Naruto glanced over to where his best rival was sitting not 10 seconds ago. Where's Sasuke? He took off running the minute you mentioned his match, Sakura replied. I don't think he even heard what Kakashi said. I suppose this means we should get back as well, Naruto said, clearly reluctant. As he laid his money on the table he called, hey am, if anyone asks, we were never here, alright. Whatever you say, Naruto, am said absently. By the time the saner members of Team 7 not that that was really much of an accomplishment arrived back at the prelims, Tenten was busy hurling weapons at Sasuke, who was blatantly cheating by using the Sharingan to avoid them. Of course, when Naruto mentioned this aloud, Kakashi predictably responded with, having a keke is not cheating, Naruto, and even if it were we're ninja. That's kind of the point. I'm just saying that being able to see someone's attack before they even use it and thus dodge it is so unfair. 
Not to mention the three days of whatever sick and twisted thing they can come up with, the very hard to stop fire or getting possessed by that god, Naruto insisted. And using the Kyubi isn't. Sakura asked. I don't use it every five seconds, Naruto shot back. In fact, I never use it if I can avoid it. So if Sasuke refrained from using the Sharingan unless he needed to, would you be more okay with it? Kakashi asked. Naruto nodded vehemently. Exactly. Although one could always argue that your stamina, regeneration, and huge amount of chakra are thanks to the Kaiubi, Sakura said. Naruto pointedly ignored that. Pain. Mkakyu no Jutsu. Sasuke said the minute there was a pause in the weapon throwing before blowing a huge fireball Tenton's way. When she jumped out of the way, Sasuke appeared behind her and kicked her into the wall. Wow, that attack was actually good for something for once, Abito marveled. I mean, it still didn't hit anything, but. Anyway, winner Sasuke. The next match is between Kiba and Kin. Are you ready for this Akamaru? Kiba asked. Akamaru barked happily. That's not very nice, Akamaru, Kiba chided. Akamaru barked again. Yes, I know it's not a real village, but that doesn't mean you're supposed to come right out and say it, Kiba argued. You just did, Kin told him. What? Kiba looked up. Oh, sorry. Akamaru can be a little tactless sometimes. Whatever, Kin sighed. Here goes, she announced, throwing at him. When she did, a bell started to ring. Kiba froze. Oh, God no. Kin paused. Had he figured out what she was planning? Impossible, it had barely even started. I hate bells. Kiba grumbled. Are you going to do that the whole match? Kin nodded. Yes. Is she allowed to do that? Kiba demanded. Abito shrugged. I don't see why not. It's either part of her attack or else she just really likes bells, and there are no rules against bringing your own music. Well there should be, Kiba muttered. I've got to end this quickly before I get a migraine. Akamaru transformed into a Kiba clone, and the two of them promptly began to pummel Kin. She did a decent job blocking the attacks, but there were two of them and one of them, and she wasn't a Tajutsu specialist like they were. Can you even move? Abito inquired after she lay on the ground for a solid minute. No, Kin admitted. Do you want to give up? Abito continued. No. Kin said, sounding horrified. Well, too bad. If you can't move you can't fight so the match goes to Kiba, Abito announced. But Kiba said. Does that mean we can stop with the bells, now? They were getting so annoying that I was finding it difficult to move towards the end. That was a side effect of her attack, Shikamaru helpfully corrected him. It was supposed to immobilize you if the match went on long enough. I knew that, Kiba insisted. Regardless of that, could we please stop the bells? Abito asked. Kiba's right, it's kind of getting annoying, and we still have one match left. Sorry, Kin said, and the bell sound stopped. Thank you. Now, Lee and Dosu, you're up, Abito called. Lee was too excited to take the stairs and instead chose to jump off the balcony. Once Dosu arrived normally, Lee smiled and pulled out his good guy pose. May the flames of your youth burn brightly in this match, Lee said politely. I have no idea what that means and even less desire to, Dosu said bluntly. That's not very youthful, Lee said, shaking his head sadly. Then he moved. He vanished, Dosu said, sounding confused. Lee reappeared right in front of him just in time to kick his opponent in the chest. Instead of giving Dosu a chance to recover, Lee appeared again behind him. It's not over, he whispered as he grabbed Dosu around the waist and hurled towards the ground. Initial Lotus. Lee shouted before the spinning cyclone that was the pair of them hit the ground. Lee let go at the last second and jumped away. Dosu was not that lucky. Usually Lee was only supposed to use that when protecting a precious person, but he'd seen Dosu fight in the forest and needed to take him out before he got a chance to use his sound attacks. Once he did that, there would be little chance of winning as he had yet to get a chance to train to fight while disoriented. Abito waited for a moment, but when Dosu showed no signs of getting up, he went to check on him. He's out, he informed everyone. He's alive but he broke quite a few bones. Match goes to Lee. Tears of joy started to rain down Lee's face. Lee. Guy shouted as he jumped onto the floor of the arena. My adorable student. I knew you could do it. I sensei. Lee cried back, touched. I embraced his favorite student. Lee. I sensei. Lee. I sensei. You know, Niji remarked, a little annoyed. He lectured me about winning. Denton who had regained consciousness rather quickly shrugged. Lee's way was more youthful, I guess. It's not actually humanly possible to be as youthful as those two, Niji pointed out. Well, you asked, Tenton replied. Good for Lee, Sakura said, smiling. He deserves this. And there is no way in hell we deserve that, Sasuke said vehemently, pointing to the still-embracing pair. You know, Guy displays the most blatant favoritism I've ever seen, Kakashi noted. How come no one ever calls him on it, but no one ever lets me live the Sasuke thing down? Because I didn't really care at the time? Sasuke offered. 
because Guy and Lee are always so happy and enthusiastic, and if anyone else tried to keep up, would it kill them? Sakura suggested. Because his other students didn't suck. Naruto guessed. He waited an extra year to enter them. Kakashi protested. If I had another year you and Sakura would have been at least half that good. Well, probably. Maybe. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.